If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Twenty four seconds of logo. You're sitting twenty four seconds now. I can at least understand the fifty seconds then. I mean, that's almost a minute. But twenty four seconds, you're basically saying logo shouldn't exist at all, which is weird considering you have a fourteen second logo now. Why did Harry and Dumbledore wait around at the ministry after the big fight with Voldemort for the dozens of news crews to show up? Especially if he's going to be ushering him away from the press like he doesn't want Harry to go through that pressure. I mean, damn. You're aware this is the Ministry of Magic, right? You know, the magical government building where magical humans can enter fairly easily. There was a huge fight here involving Death Eaters and Voldemort himself. Frankly, I'm surprised they weren't here sooner, watching the fight when it happened. Hmm, storm clouds in London. Better go to the window to witness this extremely rare occurrence. But of course, you cut out what the Brits are actually reacting to, which is the dark mark forming in the storm clouds. Harry Potter. Who's Harry Potter? Why is Harry reading the magic newspaper containing moving pictures in a non-magic public-ass place? A couple nights ago, I could have sworn I saw a picture of me. That's what I'm saying! The paper is his only way of keeping up with the current events in the magical world. Besides, you cut out the part where she said she thought she'd gone mad. This means that, besides the fact that the pictures aren't currently moving, if a muggle saw it, they would think they'd gone crazy and not that something was wrong with the paper itself. Do you see how non-bothered she is by this prospect? Hell, we wouldn't even have known about this if she didn't want Harry's Potter. Hey, I was wondering. Eleven. That's when I get off. Damn, that's specific. Would you care to elaborate further? What the hell does that's specific even mean? It's a time. Of course it's specific. Every girl that ever told Jeremy when they got off work was apparently vague purposefully. That says a lot. Well, well, if it isn't that wand blocker Dumbledore, wanting to talk to Harry after spending the entire previous year not talking to Harry. And as you found out in the previous movie, Dumbledore explained to Harry why he wasn't talking to him, which was that Voldemort could peer into Harry's mind and perhaps find out about the Order. I mean, you literally send that scene, and I send you for sending it. Distancing myself from you, you might be more protective. Bullsh** reason for not telling Harry obviously important details is bullsh**. But he was clearly right. You just sat through a sequence that demonstrated Voldemort was successful in reading and controlling Harry's mind, which manipulated him into a trap. He almost died. The only thing bullshit here is that you got nearly 10 million views on this video, and I'm the first to call you out on this shit. What the hell, Sean, Jay, and Silent Bob vids? Actually, sir, after all these years, I just sort of go with it. You go with it, despite the fact that no one has ever taken you to the Hufflepuff to stick your Slytherin in someone's Gryffindor. Whatever the f that was. Blood tasting. Also, how did licking the blood drop from Harry's head tell Dumbledore, hmm, better give that chair a closer look? Seven books and six movies in, and Jeremy still hasn't realized that Dumbledore is that dude. How many times does this man have to demonstrate that he's the greatest wizard in history? Hey, what gave me away? Kraken's blood. Uh -huh. I know this doesn't apply to you, but knowledge comes with age. Generally. Even more impressive when one considers she was muggle-born. That's racist. It's actually not. His point was that she was a great witch, considering she wasn't born of magic blood. I mean, he literally says this right after. Please don't think I'm prejudiced. No, no, no. Your mother was one of my absolute favorites. One of my best friends is muggle-born. She's the best in our year. And yet you keep getting all the credit. Two sins. One for saying Harry gets all the credit when basically every year Harry is disbelieved or treated poorly by his peers, and another for cutting off the part where Slughorn explains that he wasn't being prejudiced. Your mother was one of my absolute favorites. Look, there she is. Wait, just a minute ago you said... The muggles who own this place are in the Canary Islands. What? But now we're supposed to believe that you have pictures of all the people who are important to you? One of them just happening to be Harry's mom sitting here in this muggle house? This is a magic Airbnb. These are the things Slughorn travels with. He specifically stated earlier that he doesn't stay in a place for more than a week. If he's living a life on the run, then I would assume he brings these things with him. Also, you said, I never stay anywhere more than a week. So that means you're carrying around 19 framed pictures to a new place every week? Yes. In multiple movies, it has been shown that in the Wizarding World, you can bewitch bags to hold a large number of items, such as Hermione's bag and Newt's commander's suitcase. Why are you still surprised that literal wizards can do mundane tasks fairly effortlessly? Do you think he's carrying this stuff instead of using magic? Professor Slughorn is going to try to collect you, Harry. And that's all I need to say about that. This is exactly what I was talking about in my Chamber of Secrets video, that Dumbledore uses Harry to manipulate wizards into becoming professors at Hogwarts. I don't 
quite understand. If you're Lockhart and you're a well-known author who has women throwing themselves at you and you're this vain, why would you take a low-paying job as a teacher at Hogwarts? Because Dumbledore invited him to expose him using the famous Harry Potter as bait. As you said, he's vain and thought teaching Harry would further his career. Besides, when Dumbledore asks you to Civil War, you Civil War, goddammit. Okay, that's... You know what I mean. In the Order of the Phoenix video, you acknowledged a mistake you made regarding a sin in the Goblet of Fire video. He does use the fireplace phone again. I stand corrected. But I do not stand corrected on the fact that it's still just an easy deus ex machina for communication that comes and goes at the whim of the writer. No, 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 no. You're getting five sins for this nonsense. You don't want to remove a sin for a mistake you made in the previous video. And on top of that, you're calling a method of communication a deus ex machina. That's quite possibly your worst usage of that phrase, considering you have made it explicitly clear you think a deus ex machina is someone being saved. Like, who's even being saved here? So why aren't you acknowledging the reason for Dumbledore hiring Lockhart? Did you think we would forget? Is there ever a time when this pan isn't getting magically scrubbed in the sink? Mrs. Weasley has seven kids. No, is the answer. Make the unbreakable vow. Franchise waits until the sixth movie to mention the unbreakable vow thing, which is no doubt super important, but not really. Couple things. It's clearly super important, as this sets up one of the biggest mysteries in the series. Was Snape evil? You probably had to be there, but the ending of this book set the fandom on fire. By the time this film came out, it was already known, but to say that it wasn't important is a blatant lie. Also, why do you expect every bit of magic to have been shown before the sixth movie? What would be compelling about this part of the series if there weren't new things to introduce? That's like complaining about the new force abilities in the sequel trilogy. Also, if an unbreakable vow exists and is so powerful, why not use it to do something impossible? Like, I vow to impress Kate Upton with my considerable math skills. Because the vow will kill you if you fail to accomplish that goal. Jeremy literally thinks this bit of magic makes the thing happen instead of acting as a punishment for not keeping a promise. You can't make this shit up. And if Draco should fail, Will you yourself carry out the deed? Movie is jumping up and down trying to tell you everything about the ending right here in the first 20 minutes. Which makes you wonder why they bothered with the other 2 hours and 10 minutes. But whatever. Foreshadowing. You are amazed. As I explained earlier, the ending of this series had been known for 2 years by the time this movie came out. I might get into trouble for saying this, but generally speaking, most people who went to watch this film already knew what was going to happen. The joy of watching something like this is to see the book come alive, or heck, just to see what they cut out. But Snape killing Dumbledore isn't the entire plot of this film. That would be gaining the memories of Slughorn to find out about the Horcruxes, so yeah, the other two hours are relevant. Hey, let's go into the bombed out former wand store so the plot can happen. Brilliant. Man, you just say some of the weirdest things sometimes. Are you actually lamenting the film setting its own plot into motion? What? Is it me or do Draco and Mummy look like two people who don't want to be followed? Are there people who want to be followed? Dumb question. Someone that looks like they don't want to be followed is someone looking around making sure they're not being followed. I know you're not this dumb. Why do you pretend to be for these videos? Also, does every single plot point in the Harry Potter universe hinge on someone overhearing something or being in the right place to see something at the right time? Welcome to the mystery novel section of the library. What's a rock spot? They're invisible creatures. They float in your ears and make your brain go fuzzy. Oh, cool. What? Saying what the movie is saying and treating it as a sin. This man is taking Luna Lovegood seriously in a movie not titled Order of the Phoenix or Deathly Hollows. What a pathetic excuse for a school. Evil Harry Potter is right. Calling Malfoy Evil Harry Potter. Also, how is he right? I mean, I get why you might think that, but Malfoy literally has no other point of reference given that he's a pureblood wizard who has only ever gone to Hogwarts. If it's a pathetic excuse for a school, what is a great school? Ilvermorny? A place he's never been nor heard of? How do you know where I was? Raxperts. Your head's full of them. Yeah, but you didn't notice that until you walked into this car for absolutely no explained reason. This man is still trying to find reason in Luna's ramblings. Why is Harry's nose still bleeding? Didn't Malfoy kick him like an hour ago? Then Luna fixed his nose and now he comes in with this thing like it just happened or something? Besides the fact that Luna admitted she's never fixed a broken nose before, all she did was fix the bone in his nose. That does not fix the broken blood vessels. What have I missed? Sorting her urges all to be brave and strong in these troubled times. Since when does the sorting hat have important things to say and do anything other than tell people what house to go to? Aside from the fact that this hat sings songs and had a conversation with Harry in year two, these are troubled times as Voldemort has returned to power and has been killing people. The hat is sentient. I would think it might have something to say about the current events. 
And here's where I point out the avalanche of convenience that leads Harry to the Half-Blood Prince's book, capped off with the oh-so-clever, one old book, one new book, stand off with Ron. F***ing bravo, you maestros. But you... you didn't point out the avalanche of convenience. Pointing it out would be explaining why it is convenient in the first place, and as you have removed this scene from any context, I don't know what it is you think you're accomplishing here. Only girls are inexplicably drawn to the love potion. Because if it were the men that used this potion, people like you would have accused them of Let's just say our society has many double standards, and this is one of them. Liquid luck. Desperately tricky to make, disastrous should you get it wrong. But there is a way to make it, so why aren't there gallons of this shit? And let's say Voldemort had some of it, and Dumbledore had some of it. Who would the luck potion favor then? Who says there aren't gallons of it? All you're seeing here is a teacher offering a reward to students, just like the pizza party your teacher promised if you did well all month. Just like that pizza party, this is a thing kids can't acquire easily, but adults most likely can. I can buy pizza every day if I wanted. Get me? As for who would be luckier, since they're both lucky, should they encounter each other in a fight, the luck would cancel out and the fight would come down to skill. One sip and you will find that all of your endeavors succeed. My only question is, the f*** haven't we heard about this potion or seen it used dozens of times already during the trials and tribulations these assholes have endured? And don't give me that it's tricky to make sh either, like this series is always done with rare magical items. Something this useful would have been mass-produced by now. But that was the answer, that it's tricky to make and dangerous if you get it wrong. You can't just balk at the explanation the film gives and then say stupid shit like books don't matter. That expression means the film is what matters, but here you are, disregarding the film because of your own incredulity. What you should say is, everything is a sin because I say so and I don't accept answers to my questions. At least, that would be honest. Anyway, there are a bevy of reasons why something like this wouldn't be mass-produced. First of all, we know for a fact the Ministry of Magic regulates magic to some extent. There is almost certainly a ban or restriction on how much can be produced, and Hermione states the potion is useless against powerful enchantments. Next, you need a potion's master to brew this dangerous potion, and we know there aren't many of those. Mass production implies automation, and if this series has been clear about one thing, it's that you need a wizard to produce these potions and brews. Lastly, and most importantly, Slughorn states that overuse of this potion is toxic and potentially renders it useless. Crush it, don't cut it. No, the instructions specifically say to cut. And why is that? Was the book translated from Sanskrit or something? Why is the textbook's recipe wrong? It's not wrong. Snape's recipe is simply better. That's the thing about magic in this universe. Gifted wizards can literally create or improve magic. In our reality, you can very easily learn how to fry chicken out of a book. But Big Mama down in Louisiana doesn't need a cookbook to fry some chicken. Get it? Dumbledore's memory of his first meeting with Tom Riddle is so vivid he remembers a photograph of a place that just happens to be of major importance to the entire story. Jeremy has failed to understand the concept of wizards being able to review their own memories with the aid of a pen sieve. That is literally the point of this magical device, to allow you to revisit a memory that you may or may not remember very clearly. Did I know I just met the most dangerous dark wizard of all time? No. But how? The fact that he was a child, maybe? I mean, this man was in love with and fought Gellert Grindelwald like 50 years prior to this. There was no way he could have known Tom would grow up to be worse than Colin Johnny Mads. You see, Professor Slughorn possesses something I desire very dearly. But I'm not going to say what it is yet because screw you, that's why. Unlike you, Harry and the rest of the audience aren't abject morons. So when we watched a scene of Dumbledore's collection of memories where he stated he wants something, we understood that it's obviously a memory. You said Professor Slughorn will try to collect me. Yeah, what the f*** did you mean by that? That, just like Lockhart, Slughorn's motivation is to teach famous or notable students. Those photos you were whining about earlier showed what that means. Why does one team's Quidditch tryouts have such a large spectator turnout? And why is Hermione here instead of studying? I know she likes Ron in the romantic way, but- And let me stop you right there, because you have just answered yourself. Think you could introduce me to your friend Granger? Wouldn't mind, uh, getting on a first name basis, know what I mean? Dude, you're the handsomest guy in all of Hogwarts. You can't work up the courage to talk to Hermione? She's a little bunny, and you're a bear, and you're looking at these claws and these fangs, and you're like, how do I kill the bunny? First of all, this is the handsomest guy in all of Hogwarts. But more importantly, Jeremy doesn't know shit about women. Trust me when I say your looks have almost nothing to do with your attractiveness to women. The things women look for are financial stability, assertiveness, emotional intelligence, and height. You got all of those things, you can look like the Birdman and still pull chicks. Confundus. 
Okay, first of all, here's the Harry Potter universe again, giving us the finger regarding the need for wands to do magic. I just love the again you put into this sin. It's almost like you've all but rejected any explanation the films give for the questions you pose in these silly videos. They have shown you time and again that you don't need wands to produce magic. You literally just went over a scene with young Tom Riddle where he said he could move things without touching them, and you know damn well he hasn't been to Ollivander's yet. The fact that you said, again, is you acknowledging you understand wandless magic is a thing in these movies, but you're still questioning it. This is one of the reasons I don't give a shit about your books don't matter mantra. You literally don't accept what the film says either. Does anyone fancy a butterbeer? No, I've been to your wizarding world and I had your butterbeer and it's disgusting. Cream soda crossed with marshmallow crossed with 15 pounds of sugar. You turned sweet into a swear word. Sinning butterbeer. Also, drinking the non-frozen one, like a rookie. I want him not to touch it. Major plot thing happens at the exact same time Harry and company leave the bar. But wouldn't you have seen this major plot thing if it happened and the protagonists weren't there to witness it? None of these students with magical powers do anything while this girl is hovering in the air. Shock and panic aren't just the names of comic book characters. Besides, you should never just do something because of an emergency. Your type of thinking is what happens when people try to throw water on an electrical fire because common sense says water douses fire. Why is it? When something happens, it is always you three. Were you not briefed on how they were just minding their own goddamn business? CinemaSins gets angry at Minerva for saying something they said a couple sins ago. I think Miss Bell is lucky to be alive. It's pretty lucky that every student at Hogwarts has survived every single attempted murder since year one. Might be because there's magic for everything. Every single student? Did you just forget about the Batman? I mean, the Diggory? If a monster existed, it was buried deep within. Then why did you cast such a creepy kid to play Tom Riddle in the Dumbledore flashback? Seems to me the monster not only existed, but was right on the damn surface. That's racist. We're in the sixth movie and Quidditch is somehow still a big deal. Like, Voldemort is out there and recruiting people and readying for war. But we still need to watch Quidditch matches in this movie. And in the real world, there's an actual conventional war going on in Europe, but we're too busy talking about Will Smith and his wife, One Punch Man. Have we seen Hermione and Ron joking with each other? Touching each other, any kind of clue that they were attracted to each other. There's absolutely no chemistry between them. Just because a book or a movie says two people are going to be together doesn't mean the attraction was there all along. What even is this sin? You are quite literally saying that these movies shouldn't follow the books because you were too blind to notice these two characters obviously have feelings for each other. This is the sixth movie. In the fourth, Ron and Hermione were fighting over Ron not asking her to the Yule Ball. In the second film, there is obvious tension between Ron and Hermione as demonstrated here. Uh, um, uh, <clears throat> well, welcome back, Hermione. In the third, here is Hermione grabbing Ron's hand, something you said never happened. How the f*** does this video have 8 million views? It's Ron Weasley. Well, somebody married you after all. Hey, she's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. Okay, A, he is. And B, he's only interested in her because you just pointed her out as a possible date. Actually, what she pointed out was that this chick had been trying to smuggle him the love potion and she's only been doing it because he's the famous Harry Potter. She's warning him is what I'm saying. I believe it was Snape in the earlier movie who somehow knew Harry was eavesdropping on the teachers outside Dumbledore's office, right? And said this conversation is no longer private, right? But here, no idea he's being listened to surreptitiously. That's because that wasn't Snape, it was Moody. I mean, Barty Crouch Jr. What happens if you break an unbreakable vow? I thought the very meaning of the term was that you physically could not break it. That one sentence said more about Jeremy and Cinemasins than I could with an entire video. Perhaps Harry's right, Remus. I mean, to make an unbreakable vow... It, these people can't just find out from Dumbledore that Snape's allegiance to his vow is part of his double-double cross. Is there any reason they don't have the understanding of this shit that Albus does? As Snape explained earlier, Dumbledore has left the school grounds, so no, they can't just ask him what's going on. Snape being a double agent is vital information that, if leaked, could have lost the war against Voldemort. So, Albus killed two birds with one stone, protecting his student and preserving the cover of his double agent. He's a vanishing cabinet. A vanishing cabinet. I know, right? Why haven't we ever heard of these things before? No franchise in history gets more mileage out of making shit up as they go along than this one does. You sure about that? I'm pretty sure the Terminator, Star Wars, and Fast and Furious franchises have something to say about that. But why would he tamper with his own memory? Yeah, why stop at tampering? Surely there's a spell that could make you forget something completely. There is. Hermione uses it in the next film, and you misunderstand it there too. But Horace doesn't want to forget. He wants to make it seem as if he was righteous in that moment instead of what he actually did, which was help Voldemort become nearly invincible. And for the 
love record. I've always found him interesting. Love how all the teachers are just silently absorbing the teen romance drama unfolding in front of them, as though there aren't more important topics to discuss or things to do. Actually, I find that to be one of the more charming aspects of this series, that the adults of this world allow the kids agency and the ability to make decisions that might even save the world. Stop it, Ron. You're making it snow. Now magic doesn't even have to be done on purpose to happen? So, did you just miss the movie that you send where Harry inadvertently blew up his aunt? Knowing you, you probably think he meant to do that. Harry uses a spell he literally just read the name of in a book five minutes ago without knowing what it does. Hell, I'm surprised he could even pronounce it correctly on the first try, recalling his ridiculous butchering of Diagon Alley in the second film. It's almost like he's four years older and more practiced with the faux Latin the magical community uses. It's the wrong requirement. Hide the Half-Blood Prince's book, where no one will ever find it, including you. When you see Parallax in this room, you'll understand why this is a bad idea. Just destroy the thing. Jeremy mentions Parallax cliché. Merlin's beard. Misunderstood creatures spiders are. Yeah, but in the Chamber of Secrets, this one in particular was going to kill Ron and Harry before the magic car came and saved them. I think these spiders are properly understood. Well, Hagrid wasn't talking about Aragog specifically, as he said, spiders. And I have to agree, spiders are supremely beneficial to humans, as they keep other, more harmful bugs at bay, and they stop the Green Goblin. That's where you've been going, isn't it, sir? When you leave the school? Yes. And I think perhaps I may have found another. F***ing what? You just said- This is beyond anything I imagined. So which is it, asshole? You either hadn't imagined it, or you've been investigating it for months. Yeah, that was before Harry touched the ring, revealing that he is also a Horcrux, which is what Dumbledore was referring to with that line. Well, sure, I'm glad that Voldemort kept a nice picture of this place in his orphan room that a memory somehow remembered. That a memory somehow remembered. He seriously doesn't hear himself. Harry. What? How about casting the Aguamenti spell directly into his mouth? Or have him cup his hands? Oh well, I guess there are no options other than to drink the dirty cave water. Which is exactly the point of the spell and one of the ways in which Voldemort has protected this locket. Is this a good time to ask whether the Patronus charm is strictly for Dementors? Couldn't it help in this situation too? Is this a good time to ask whether salt is strictly for salty foods? Couldn't it help in sweet situations too? I'm about to cut off. <laughs> Snape is addicted to Dumbledore. Are you addicted to someone that asked you to be addicted to them? I thought that was called porn. Half Blood Prince, boy. Good book. Very good book. Chapter 12. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's actually illegal to uh, read books over the internet. Like, how crazy is that? Copyright law is so awful.